Chapter 52 The Power of a Mysterious Technique Is it that surprising my opponent landed a spell? Felminia and Luffa rush up to Swayme as the small shadow scurries off into the night. Felminia says, Sueme Dono. Lefil says, Sueme Kuen. Swayme, despite receiving their gazes, examines the tenacious, black, mist coiled around his left arm. Felminia says, Sueme Dono. How are you feeling? You appear to have been afflicted by that person's dark magic. Yeah, it hit me. It passed through my fortress walls. Swayme holds his left arm out to her and reveals the dark magic still clinging to it. Even though his glove and the cuff of his shirt remain undamaged, the black mist did penetrate through his fortress's walls, black bands are coiled around his arm and hand. The sections of skin they cover are drying and wrinkling. The that is? Swayme speaks with a grim expression as he says, where it got me. Even among astral attacks, it's pretty powerful. It doesn't just stop at the astral body, but goes on to influence the flesh. Luffa stands on her toes to get a better look and says, Are you going to be all right? Swayme speaks as though his situation is someone else's problem. Not one bit. It'll rot off if I don't do anything about it. W.H. what? Felminia says, That's a serious problem. You need recovery magic. Wait, would recovery magic even be able to heal this? Oi, oi, calm down. Leffel says, what are you saying, Sueme Kuen? Necrosis isn't some trivial issue. It's fine. Since my astral body was damaged, recovery magic won't have any immediate effect. Really? Felminia breaths out a sigh of relief at Sueme's nod. To her, the wrinkles on Sueme's arm look terrible, but his actual condition might not be that bad. Receiving a deep wound to the astral body is similar to receiving a terminal illness. It is not an ordinary injury. Time is needed for its restoration. The left arm will simply not be usable for now? Swayme once more looks at his left arm. At that moment, a patrol whistle rings. And the military police arrive. The late military police came running to investigate. Swayme and his group prepared themselves for rigorous questioning to the events that transpired, but the military police indirectly seemed to know what happened. They only asked a few simple questions. At present, Swayme wonders if any of that served a purpose. The military police came late, asked a few questions, and then left as if everything was already resolved. Even if they came to investigate of their own accord, this isn't a situation where they can just look the other way. According to what Felminia heard, the military police find Elliot to be a nuisance. He may be the Yusha and cooperating with the Empire to resolve the Coma incident, but to the military police, he's an outsider who barged in on their investigation, usurped control, and now uses them as his hands and feet. Furthermore, all of the achievement will go to Elliot. That this cooperation is the result of the Salvation Church isn't enough to motivate them to perform better. Apparently, the soldiers are secretly wondering if the coma incidents won't be resolved by someone else. Swayme, as a someone else candidate, is included in those wonders. Of course, even then none of them are willing to cooperate and anticipate any help he could provide as acquiescence. Still, the military policemen who always reek of alcohol are placing their bets on Felminia. That fact implies a different truth. Regardless, none of that seems to be the primary reason for the deteriorating situation and growing negligence. Sway may sighs as he looks at the military police. The lack of progress in their investigation makes them listless. The consultant they brought in from the Spellcasters Guild to make up for their lack of knowledge on dark magic does nothing more than shakes her head. That's when the military police cordoning the area become excited. A man wearing a military uniform soon steps forward through the gathered soldiers. What a coincidence! I heard that the person here was the Yusha's opponent, but to think it was you! 
His voice and appearance are familiar to Swaymei. He met the man a few days ago when Liliana was leading him to the library. If I recall, we met a few days ago. You're with the Imperial Army. Why are you here? The man closes his eyes, but his expression doesn't change at Suemei's question. There's no need for me to tell you that. You only have to do one thing right now. Tell me why you are here, Suemei Yakagi. Did he hear my name from Liliana? To Suemei, the man's tone is more of an order than anything else. He straightens his posture and asks, Sorry, but would it be all right to have your name? I am a communications colonel of the Imperial Army, Rouge Zandike. Where have I heard that name before? Lethel raises her eyebrows in surprise and murmurs, One of the Seven Swords. Magic lamps illuminate the surroundings of the latest coma incident a bitter orange. Many restless shadows are created by their burning lights. Rouge, having sent Swayme and his party home, watches the military police carry out their investigation when a small shadow in military uniform appears. Rouge speaks without turning his head. Where have you been, Liliana? Liliana becomes nervous as she says, following the evening wind. Didn't I tell you to not go out needlessly? Liliana shrinks upon being reprimanded. I apologize. Liliana flinches as Rouge continues, but he doesn't pay it any mind. Well, no matter. Have you been informed about the situation? I was able to hear most of it from the military, police. Is that so? What is your interpretation of their situation? No change. The criminal's target was another aristocrat of poor standing. Right now, without conducting a proper survey or filing a proper report, they have decided to gamble on the Yusha. Of poor standing, you say? Liliana nods at Rouge's repetition of her words. The military police's lack of motivation is no surprise. Acting for the sake of the empire's upper class on behalf of the Salvation Church chips away at their moral. Furthermore, the Yusha who joined them is an ineffective leader. Even with his help, they still arrive late to the scene of the crime. Neither the Yusha nor the aristocrats will be a threat. Those are Liliana's thoughts as she turns her back to the crime scene. Although this situation seems to be in my favor, it has stirred up those around me. Colonel. Is he complaining because of the difficulties these incidents bring him? There is no disputing that the aristocrat she assaulted today, along with all the aristocrats that she has assaulted until now, feel uncomfortable with Rouge's rise from commoner status. Worse, they're also maneuvering to remove him. Right now, those people, having been targeted in a series of incidents, are casting unnecessary suspicion onto the colonel. Her actions are wrong, but if she becomes negligent in eliminating those aristocrats due to fear, they will sooner or later crush Rouge as they bury him in their envy. Therefore, even if her actions come at the cost of herself, she will do anything for the colonel, for her adoptive father who picked her up and raised her. While Liliana is in the middle of strengthening her resolve, in the middle of apologizing to him in her heart. Liliana. Ye yes? Having her name called out while lost in her thoughts exposes her inattention. Rouge, however, doesn't reprimand her, but instead gazes at her as though she were about to disappear. He says, about that Swayme Yakagi from before. Something about, that man? I want more information about him. Get in contact with him and investigate. The man who's both Liliana's adoptive father and superior officer issues an unexpected order. She says, investigate Swayme, Yakagi? Correct, he appears to have come in contact with the culprit. He mentioned it by chance during my interrogation. Colonel, do you believe he's the culprit? That's unlikely, but I am curious. Understood, Colonel. With that said, Liliana follows Rouge and joins the military police with their investigation. 
Ever since the encounter with the culprit behind the coma incidents, Swayme has spent his time researching to cure to the dark magic infecting his arm. Currently, he's in a corner of the Empire's esteemed library skimming over the spines of books. Hum, dark magic. According to Felminia, one of this world's experts on magic, out of the eight attributes of magic, dark magic has the distinction of being particularly difficult to wield. More than that, however, falls outside her field of study. She also mentioned that a dark magic user resides in Aster, but that person's reclusive nature makes asking for help impossible. The vast collection of books offered by the Empire's Imperial Library isn't much help either. The few tombs available on dark magic are useless. The problem isn't that wielding dark magic is heresy, but that the spellcaster's body will be destroyed without a strong aptitude for the element. According to Felminia and Leffel, very few users of dark magic appeared in the past. Furthermore, those aforementioned users all suffered premature deaths due to their bodies being destroyed. None of their journals or notes remain either. Hum. Swayme loosens the bandages wrapped around his left arm. That person's black mist breached the walls of his gallant, golden, fortress. The dark moisture still tinges his hand and arm, drying them up and covering them in wrinkles. Right now, dark red blotches are appearing on his skin. Just what is this stuff? Fire, water, wind, lightning, earth, wood, and light are physical existences. Dark element, however, exists neither as energy nor matter. Whenever people do talk about darkness, they refer to either something that absorbs light or an empty area. The same applies to outer space. It is considered to be lacking in light, not filled with darkness. Then again, dark matter and dark energy do exist. Those topics exist to validate the laws of physics and are considered theoretical apparent matter with theoretical numerical values. In that case, the power of darkness brings those theoretical concepts into existence by inputting imaginary numbers into numerology. Combining numerical values with something that doesn't exist in this world allows for its creation. However, concepts such as imaginary numbers and apparent values won't be understood in a world where mathematics is underdeveloped. They'll remain mysteries for generations to come. Not even the side effects generated by dark magic will spur the development. There's also the issue of absolute emptiness, enlightenment on that topic can't be deduced through normal ways of thinking. It can interfere in casting, block light, and unleash astral attacks that damage the spiritual body, is there a single force in this world that unites those characteristics? Laughter bursts from Swayme while he's immersed in those thoughts, foo, foo 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 Finally, that feeling of crashing against an unseen wall, that feeling of pursuing the unknown, to reach out into the impossible. This is what it means to be a mystic scholar. Swayme reconfirms that what he's feeling is real. It's what motivates him to keep searching. Most of all, now he can add dark magic to his list of mysteries. The level of civilization on this world is much lower than his own. The current era is probably the Steel Age. No, it's much older than that. Either way, he needs to adjust the laws and theories of science and magic that he follows to match the time period. I wonder if I missed anything? Usually, when considering the subject of astral attacks, the average magician turns to the pagan concept of Goetia. By borrowing the power of mysterious existences, humans can pierce the spirit shell and attack the untouchable astral body. Other systems allowing for the same effect include witchcraft, old grand magic, and Ian Young curses. Even negative thoughts can harm another's spirit and soul if they're intense enough. However, even though magic is what placed Swayme in his current predicament, the magic of his current world revolves around the premise of utilizing the elements. That makes finding an exception on magic used on him impossible. Except, I'm positive I felt a grudge clutch my left arm back then. That's it. Back then I spoke completely on instinct. Feeling such a disgusting attack got on Suayme's nerves. Foul magic fueled by hate and resentment shouldn't be manipulated without protection. 
he probably wouldn't have gotten as angry as he did had someone else been the caster. Why is a child using this kind of magic? An image of Liliana runs through Sue May's head. The criminal is about the same age as her. If it is her case, then, as a magician, it's his responsibility to show her the proper way of magic. Dot. I'm confusing myself. I need to organize my thoughts. His thoughts are all over the place. He's connecting loosely related ideas to one another at his own convenience and accepting them as truth. Even though he's making such conjunctures right now, there is no guarantee they will turn out correct. For one, Liliana doesn't use dark magic. Therefore, she can't be that shadow. She doesn't need to be shown the proper way of magic. Sue, May, no. He needs to be careful with his assumptions. Right now, he needs to focus on dark magic. It's a force fueled by negativity. Then what role does the element play? Wrong, the element is the catalyst needed to utilize dark magic in the first place. If so, doesn't that make his original premise wrong? He needs to delve back even further to uncover the secret to manipulating that. Sue Aime Dono Hum! What what? Felminia? The loud shout into his ear makes his head jolt up as his thoughts are scattered. Swayme, shocked at her method of calling out to him, says, Was there a point to that? No, it was just an idea. Swayme waves his hand as he says, Sorry for taking up your time. He then gestures towards the corner of his desk where he's placed a grimoire and magical items needed to decipher it. Once she's seated, he asks her about her investigations. How was it? Sorry, I was unable to gather much. Even though having collaborators keep an eye out would be the most helpful, as expected, hardly anyone wants to cooperate with us. Felminia skulks as she says, the devout appear to be transmitting the news to the rest of the imperial capital citizenry. The military police, to the contrary, are being rather cooperative. How so? Despite their position as military police, they lack faith in Elliot Dono. Really? As you should be aware, even though your competition against Yushidano is a recent development, Yushidano had already been searching for the criminal. When he first joined the search, he was presented to the military police as the Yusha by the Salvation Church. They cooperated, offered him all the information they had, and set off to apprehend the criminal. Using the name Yusha with the backing of the Salvation Church is a clever hand, but there is also no denying that such a tactic can deteriorate another's goodwill. Felminia continues, well, the military police officer who let this information slip was inebriated and had many malicious grievances. I suppose something like this is normal for Elliot Dono. Yusha Elliot has a more diligent personality than Swayme surmised from their conversation at the Twilight Pavilion. This time, however, that diligence is working against him. He is unable to notice it either because of how it made him unable to join in the search. His inspiration has led to the faithful deciding to shoulder the burden of searching for the culprit themselves. Felminia says, could the military police be using us as a method of retaliation? I'd bet they are. How repulsive, behaving in such a manner despite the suffering of the citizenry. Felminia sighs in an attempt to lure Swayme into agreeing with her rebuke. Swayme pushes his index finger against his temple and explains that the military police have multiple reasons for their apathy. That's partially true, but I'll tell you the rest later. Understood. By the way, what happened to the aristocrat we rushed over to protect? He's currently receiving treatment at home, but like every other victim, is still unconscious. Back then, Swayme could only watch from a distance, but the man struck by the small shadow spell was immediately taken away by the military police to their station. He wonders if he'll also have to visit him to finish his investigation. Well then, I ask that you continue with your task. Swayme decides to take a short break after hearing Felminia's report. He makes small talk as they make themselves comfortable on their chairs. 
That reminds me, I've been wondering, but how am I able to read books and talk with you? Sueme's past few days in the imperial capital made him aware of the discrepancies in language. First was the dissonance he felt during his conversation with Elliot. He's also able to read the library's books without any problems despite them being written in a different language. That's because of the hero summoning's divine protection. I recall that we had a similar conversation once before. I wasn't in the mood to care back then, but now I'd like to hear the details. How am I able to communicate with you? A translation spell is automatically applied to those invoked by the hero summoning ceremony. From my understanding, the level of comprehension is proportional to the summoner's level of education. How so? In regards to you and your friends, my level of education. Language is translated when concepts I am familiar with match with those of your world. Words originally not from your world will be converted to match your pronunciation. Conversely, concepts I am unfamiliar with will come out in your native tongue. If translation is restricted to concepts that exist, that implies that conversations on topics without concept will be limited. Back when Swayme fought Felminia, she couldn't understand the term barrier magic. Dark magic is another limit. Such magic doesn't exist on Sueme's world. The simple translation he hears was made by combining the word dark with magic. Felminia holds up her bountiful chest with pride. Fufufu, in other words, my knowledge is what supports both Yushidano and Sueme Dano in their conversations and in reading and writing. Swayme sighs as he says, you've been a great help. Felminia then inquires on a topic she has been hesitating to broach. By the way, Sueme Dano, how was your investigation? No good. None of the reference material is of any help. Swayme jokes about the hopelessness of his situation, but upon seeing Felminia's expression become stricken with sorrow, adopts a more serious tone. However, I am in the process of coming up with countermeasures. Countermeasures? Yeah, that's my current situation. There is much we of this world do not understand about dark magic either. Will analyzing it with only the knowledge form your world be enough? The information Swayme has thus far uncovered laces his tone with optimism. All that's left is for him to observe dark magic once more. I don't think there's anything magic can't do. There isn't anything on this world that can't be uncovered. Well, that's my opinion. Felminia tilts her head and says, there was something that caught my attention. Yeah. At the end of the dark spellcaster's chant, some words I had never heard before were added. They went. While Felminia struggles to pull the words out of her head, Swayme says, Argo, Lukla, Lagwa, Skiet, Raphael, and Babylon. I believe. Felminia's pensive expression deepens as she says, yes, those. That was the first time I ever heard them. Just what could they mean? Excuse me for interrupting, but is everything all right? Swayme and Felminia turn towards the voice. Standing behind them is a man dressed in the library's white staff uniform. Swayme recognizes him from when he first came to the library. Librarian San? No, I'm just here for more research. The librarian smiles while saying, Yukagi Kuen, correct? You're quite enthusiastic with your research today as well. Swayme, receiving praise for his diligence, gives a subtle smile while saying, It's nothing. Felminia, unfamiliar with the man, says, a man of the forest? Sueme Dano, do you know this gentleman? Is the phrase, man of the forest, supposed to mean elf? Sueme wonders if the term is an alias. After all, the librarian did introduce himself as an elf when they first met. He says, this person is the librarian, Romian San. He showed me around the first time I came here. Is that the case? How unusual. From what I have heard, the forest people tend to distance their involvement with humans as much as possible. Ramayan gives Felminia a wry smile. 
I am often called eccentric for having left my native forest. Even if the conversation was self-propelled, the elves of this world match the descriptions of elves from Suame's world. They are forest people who close themselves off from the outside world. Suame sets those thoughts aside and says, regardless, is something wrong? No, I happened to be passing by and became worried after overhearing you mention dark magic. Felminia's eyes widen at Romian's interest in the topic. Are you familiar with it? Yes, I've spent a reasonable amount of time studying it, so I am somewhat knowledgeable. A discussion on dark magic can happen in the most surprising of places. Ramayan begins the moment he joins Swayme and Felminia at the desk. He says, dark magic is one of the more powerful elements of the eight attributes, fire, water, wind, earth, lightning, wood, light, and dark. No, saying dark. It is an evil magic. Why are the two of you researching it? This, Swayme holds up his left arm as he loosens its bandages. Romian's expression changes to shock. He readjusts his spectacles with a finger while saying, that, that's why you're researching dark magic? Felminia says, can you tell us anything based off what you see? Before coming to this library, I was also a spellcaster. My specialty was treating dark magic. Yukagi Kuen, could you show me your arm again? Swayme, not having any reason to refuse, removes his bandages with a nod and holds out his arm. Ramayan examines his arm for a while before releasing an admirable, ho! Oh. He then says, the condition is stable. Normally, such a strong corrosive force of dark magic would have already reached the body's core. Yukagi Kuen, did you do this yourself? Well, I just applied a healing spell that I'm familiar with. Romian's expression does a complete 180 as he says, no, that treatment was wonderful. I've never seen such splendid medical technique before. Where did you receive this dark magic? Just from the culprit responsible for disturbing the city's peace. That can't be. You were targeted? Swayme summarizes his situation to Ramayan. He begins with the goddess oracle commanding him to compete against Elliot and ends with his match against the culprit a few days ago. Ramayan makes a grim face as he listens without interrupting. He sighs as he sort the information in his mind and says, I see, that's the reason. I've heard rumors about Yushasama competing against someone, but to think that it's your group. He then fixes his pose and gives Swayme an earnest look. How do I say this, please stop? You mean, stop searching for the criminal? Yes, outsiders like me probably have no place in saying this, but your opponent uses dark magic. If you make any mistakes while receiving those spells, the outcome could be fatal. Just the shock of receiving a single spell could kill you. Even so, I won't abandon my companion. But that shouldn't be something to trade your life for. Granted, traveling with Yushasama would be perilous. Ramayan pauses for a moment, a bit back, Yukagi Kuen, you said Babylon. Are you familiar with that word? Felminia frowns at his question. You're familiar with it. It's an old word I haven't heard in a long time. If you are familiar, please, would you teach us about it? Ramayan gives Felminia a solemn nod. It's a twilight name. A twilight name? Translators note, the kanji when Ramayan says it can actually mean a few different things, depending on the context. Felminia breaks it down by sounding it out when she repeats, and when those are translated, it means evening word. Evening doesn't sound as ominous as twilight, so I changed it. Correct, it's a savage word born alongside our world's magic. That cursed word is now lost to time, but has a special purpose, it amplifies the power of the dark attribute. It amplifies? Yes, when it is added to dark magic, it increases the spell's power by several fold. I believe dark magic users would most likely add it at the end of their chance. Then, the dark magic user. I dare say that the person becomes able to wield dark magic of considerable power. 
Philmenia holds her breath at Romeo's explanation. Romeon then says, I will say it once more, please stop. No matter how many lives you have, they won't be enough. Swayme says, however, we have no choice but to continue. For the sake of your companion? Ramayan releases a sorrowful sigh upon seeing Swayme nod. If you'll go that far, then asking you to stop would be pointless. I'm sorry, even though we asked you for guidance, we're ignoring your advice. I understand, but you absolutely cannot let your guard down against the dark magic user. Ramayan then bows while saying, excuse me, and returns to his duties. Felminia has a somber expression as she says, dark magic with a twilight name. Sueme Dano? Not receiving a reply, she turns towards him. Sueme is lost to his thoughts. He sometimes mutters a few words while his gaze stares off into the distance. He glances towards the ceiling and says, a uh, twilight name?